Hello, and this is going to be one of the parts where I'll teach you how to create a custom collider for your practical simulations. The reasons why you would like to use a custom collider is it's much more optimized. You can optimize it better. It's uh, essentially going to speed up your simulations in that case. And also you have much more customization and much more flexibility in your simulations, of course. And also you understand the way colliders work. So this is the uh, collider we're going to be creating. I also have diff two different uh, simulations here. So this is the one using static object and this is the one using our custom collider. Uh, the custom collider also contains uh, the velocity. So our moving rubber toy has a velocity here from our trail stop. Uh, our custom collider also adds the velocity to the par particles, but a static object doesn't. So that's also a one bonus which we'll be doing, which we will be doing. And if I uh, now show you the uh, performance monitor, this is the uh, stats for 100 frames of a simulation with a, with a custom solver, uh, sorry, custom static object, all right, custom collider. And it took one minute and 39 seconds almost. And with a static object, it took one minute, 51 seconds. So the static object actually didn't even simulate our uh, velocities received by our particles from our collider. Uh, on the other hand, our custom collider did and it still took longer so I'm going to show you how to create a one here so this is the setup here and we'll be walking you through this setup in the next few uh, parts so I'll unplug this and I'll uh, create a geometry wrangle but before that what I would like to do is I would like to give you a quick overview of the setup just a sphere density scattering some points in this case 10,000 and adding some jitter, which is uh, which has a seed based on time. Then I um, have my rubber toy, which is animated, uh, placing a trail to compute the velocity in this case, like so. Then creating some normals. And then what I'm doing is I'm rasterizing my surface or creating a volume out of uh, my surface. So this is a SDF field, which I'll explain in a second. And then I'm also rasterizing the uh, normals and the velocity. We won't be needing this once in this part, but they'll be useful in the next part. So I would like to explain generally how collisions work. So we have a sphere and we would have a point inside. So let's say with points falling down and a certain point suddenly appears inside of our collision mesh. Since we computed our surface field here, which is a SDF field, which means assigned distance field, this will, uh, this stores the data or stores the distance from our surface. So if we volume sample this particle and we assign the SDF value to this particle, we will know for each particle how far away the particle is from our surface. What we can use it for? So we can create a if function or a if statement where we can separate particles that are outside and inside, this will optimize the simulation in many ways because now we know which particles to compute other attributes on and which particles to just pass on. So also the SDF field is very useful because we can create a gradient out of it. A gradient is a vector field which has uh, its vectors pointing in the rising values or in increasing values. So in this case, if I have the smallest values in the center of my sphere and the largest value somewhere inside and on the surface I have zero, the vectors will be pointing outwards like this. So you can also think of it as a normal for a volume. So how do we use this? No, gradients are always normalized, so they have always length of one. So what we can do is now we know where to move the particle, but how further or how much to move it is determined by the SDF field. So now if I take my gradient field, sorry, gradient field, and I multiply it with my SDF field, I get a negative value. I get a vector pointing the opposite direction because the SDF value is negative in this case. Inside the mesh or inside our collider, we get SDF values which are negative. So how to fix this? Just multiply it, sorry, multiply it by minus one and now we have a vector that has a length uh, of the of our distance from the surface and also is pointing the shortest path to the surface. So I'll be showing you how to do that in a code, in a VEX code. So I'll call this SDF. 
uh, sorry, SDF value will equal, equal volume sample surface because that's how our volume is called. But for that, we actually need to specify in our inputs here to one of our second geometry input, which is this one here, like so. Uh, now we want to create our if function. So if SDF uh, value is smaller than zero, so that means if the particle is inside of our uh, collision object, then execute inside. So when uh, the particle is inside, we want to cr uh, create our gradient, which will be volume gradient. So this function will create a gradient out of a field you uh, put inside of it. So in, in this case, I'm putting the surface field inside of it and um, calculating it based on the position of each point. Then what I'm doing is I'm taking the uh, position and I'm adding uh, the vector, so in this case the gradient. So now I have the direction of where to move my point. Now I need the amount to move it point and now I need to invert the vector because the uh, SDF value is inside negative. Now if I run this, we can see something is happening. If I zoom in, now we can see it better. It's actually colliding with our uh, rubber toy, which is nice. But we're still missing the uh, particles bouncing off of the rubber toy. And also, the particles aren't receiving any velocities from our moving rubber toy. So we'll do that in the next lesson. And I'll see you there. Bye.